So today with us we have uh, Professor Uwe Naumann from uh, STFC University in Aachen. Um, and Professor Naumann has spent a number of years um, as a computer scientist working in algorithmic differentiation and adjoint. So I guess we should start off by uh, asking what exactly is an adjoint um, and why should people in finance be interested in them? Right, so um, yeah, as you just said, Jack, the uh, like adjoints are essentially the main motivation for what my group in, at, at Aachen University is, uh, is doing. Um, we, um, so adjoints, I guess, uh, as a general concept, can be summarized in one word or two words, cheap gradients. And what does that mean? It means that you can, it's essentially a method for integrating sensitivity information into your numerical methods such that the computational cost does not rise with the amount of sensitivities you include. So to be, to be more precise, if you imagine sort of the traditional approach of, of uh, computing sensitivities by finite differences or bumping in the finance world, uh, what, you, what you get is essentially by perturbing each of the free parameters that you want sensitivities with respect to, you get a com computational complexity that grows with the number of input parameters or, or free parameters. And adjoints give you a way to essentially eliminate that dependence of the computational cost on the size of this gradient. So to be, to be precise here, when we say sensitivity, we basically mean what we would call in finance Greeks. That's and what I mean. And the adjoints essentially give you a way to calculate arbitrarily large sets of Greeks um, for what's basically a, a computational cost, which is independent of the number of Greeks that you want. That's right. So if you if so, imagine you have a, you have a, I don't know a pricing function that depends on 200 free parameters, mm -hmm. and suppose your pricing function runs for a minute. Mm -hmm. If you bump each of your inputs, it takes at least 200 minutes, yeah. which is a yeah. bit more than three hours. With adjoint methods, the same job can get done essentially in about 10 minutes. I see, I see. So they sound great. Um, how do you compute them? Uh, well, there are sort of different methods of implementing adjoint, uh, adjoint methods. One, and that's the, the approach we've been following, is, is algorithmic differentiation. Algorithmic differentiation is essentially a method that allows me to ask you for a program that evaluates, for example, this price and give you a program back which gives you all these sensitivities at the previously specified cost. And that's sort of, it's essentially a set of rules, well-defined mathematical rules that allow you to do this program transformation. And there's no approximation or anything involved here? This is there is no, pro no approximation whatsoever. You get sort of these sensitivities with machine accuracy, mm -hmm. which uh, uh, can be, or is most of the time, is an advantage over finite differences or bumping, but mm -hmm. also may have disadvantages uh, when you sort of compare exact sensitivities with what sort of finance practitioners expect to see when they bump things like discontinuous payoffs, for example. Oh, I see. So, um, how do you actually do this in practice on a large code base? Um, well, so what we've been working on, I mean, as a, as a, as a set of rules, uh, algorithmic differentiation allows you to essentially implement these things by hand. So you can take your original code, you can rewrite the code and, and sort of do what I just vaguely described. Um, what we're interested in is to sort of help, peop help people get this or make this transition work in terms of providing tools, tools that allow you to sort of get this overhead uh, down from uh, a, well, considerably large overhead when you write things by hand mm -hmm. down to a level where it's still acceptable. I mean, handwriting is, as you can imagine, error prone and one oh, of yeah, the bigger yeah, sure. disadvantages is um, you always, in your modeling, in your simulation, in your computation strategy, you always have to keep two codes in sync, the original code and the code computing the sensitivities. Mm -hmm. If you have a tool-based approach, you can essentially focus your modeling on what we call the primal code, the original code, mm -hmm. and by running the tool in whatever incarnation the tool comes, uh, on this primal code, you get sort of the, the adjoint code that gives you the sensitivities. And you, can, you don't really have to think much about the sen these sensitivity codes once you've put in this initial investment of actually getting it to run in the first place. It's relatively straightforward. It's not a massive job to integrate it with a code project. Um, it, uh, depending on the example. So on, on, on academic examples, it's reasonably straightforward. And this is what you often see. 
right? Now we've been doing these things on uh, quant libraries with uh, hundreds of thousands of lines of code, if not a million. Mm -hmm. And there it certainly is an issue, uh, but the issues are less sort of at the conceptual mathematical level, but the main focus or the main challenges there are certainly in sort of getting a, an algorithmic differentiation tool married with a large quant library. So we're talking software engineering issues, right. uh, like compatibility issues, like validation of things, like, uh, well, in, often in the context of C++, actually combining a generic templated, hopefully, uh, quant library code with a generic templated uh, AD library and there are issues there. They can be addressed, but it's not, it, it doesn't go like this, no. I see, I see. So perhaps just to, to wrap up, um, seeing as we're at a math finance conference, um, what would you say, in your opinion, is the, is the direction of, of math finance over the next couple of years? Where do you see things going, and in particular, where do you see AD uh, entering into it all? Yeah, so as a, I mean, as a, as a computer scientist, my view is reasonably limited on, on finance but I well I guess it's not much different from sort of the fields I, I typically work with namely engineering and, and natural sciences where this whole technology originally comes from um, well I guess it will take money to move on it will take brains to move on uh, and I, I believe that brains will be spread more or less evenly uh, across uh, the modeling perspective meaning mapping reality into mathematics. Uh, the numerics uh, component, which is essentially concerned with, uh, well, getting quantitative results out of your mathematical models, mm -hmm. right? Uh, algorithmic differentiation being a part of it, or adjoint methods in general being a part of it. And last but not least, of course, high performance computing uh, issues like accelerator technology, massively parallel systems, in order to get the answers you're looking for in a reasonable amount of time and well as quickly and as robustly as possible. So I guess it's, I mean, this combined with a reasonably uh, uh, strategic management uh, will probably have to do the job. But that's, I realize it's a reasonably generic uh, statement. It also applies to other areas, but I don't think that finance is that special in that regard. I see. Well, Professor Norman, thank you very much. Thank you.